Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course, and we're pleased to be joined by Jade Buford, of course, the driver of the number 48 Big Machine Vodka Chevrolet for the Big Machine Racing Team, one of the uh, many Xfinity and truck drivers you'll see throughout the season. Um, all right. Well, on this channel, I mean, uh, how's it going? Uh, it's pretty good. We had uh, a bit of an up and down Daytona, but we had some really good ups. So it's uh, as a team, we have a lot to be proud of at Big Machine Racing. Let's talk about the ups first off qualifying. I think a lot of people were surprised to see you guys up there. But when I watched qualifying, I kind of wasn't because from what you had told me before the season started, um, the difference from this year, from this year to last year, was night and day. Basically, it's, uh, of course, the support that you guys have gotten from RCR. Um, what what has it been like? What What's different? Uh, so from what we had last year, there's, a like I told you before, there there's a lot different. Uh, we are still a small team when it comes to quantity of employees, but now we are a large team when it comes to the resources that we have to pull from with our partnership with RCR. So now rather than me showing up at the track, having never seen it before. Uh, I've done sim work weeks prior leading up to the race. So we have a much better idea of what we're unloading off the hauler, plus all the resources that RCR has to offer from engineering and just technical support being right across the street from us now. Yep. It has been a, obviously a, a game changer. And we kind of, I kind of thought it would be, and it was great to go to Daytona and have a fast, uh, spike cooler Chevy Camaro that we could put in the shootout for the pole. Yeah, uh, that was that was that, that. Of course, you know that that was um, that was. I think a lot of people were surprised at this. Are you were you surprised by how you guys did? Did you expect to make the the second round? I mean, obviously, you did, but I think I think the amount of reaction a lot of people got was yeah. I think they were. Yeah, uh, it's something we knew we could do with, with all the resources we've had available to us. We knew it was a possibility. It was a matter of going out and, and doing everything right. Uh, that was probably the biggest question mark for myself and perhaps for the others. Uh, we couldn't we knew we had to be as good as the, the big teams that we compete against every weekend yeah. to, to make it there. Um, yeah, of course, I know that, you know, Patrick Donahue and of course, you know, Keith on the management side um have really put a lot into this what what is what are both of them meant to all this uh, they're a huge part uh, just uh, the three of us are kind of uh, i think as a uh, as a team almost so everybody has their roles and everybody is super important in, to making everything successful uh to every race we go to this year and of course, uh, for pit crew wise, I believe you have the forty one of the one of the GMS pit crews. I, I believe the forty two team. Yeah, the forty two team. Oh, yeah, they're top notch, and they do a great job. And look forward to learning a lot from them this year as a driver on what they want and what works best for them, and and trying to develop myself to be able to do that time and time again. Yeah. So let's talk about the race. I know that there were a lot of things. You were in it throughout. You were in that lead pack throughout all the race. What was it like really kind of being it? We'll, we'll, get, to the, we'll get to the big part next. Um, what was it like to, you know, just to be up there and, you know, be with those guys? Because it looks like there were a lot of, there were a lot of Chevys up there, but there were a lot of, uh, lot of your friends up there. You're, of course, from RCR and all the, the other teams that RCR supplies for, College, Jordan Anderson, uh, Brandon Brown was up there yourself. Um, what was it like to see all those uh, those ECR cars up there? Well, I think it was a good starting point for us as a team, and especially for myself uh, as a driver to get up there and start mixing it up with those guys r right from the get-go. Because one thing I don't want it to be is I don't want that to be a one-off this year. I want them to get used to me being around and start that mutual respect that most racers have between each other. But if they never race against me, then uh, then I'm not a, a real thought in their mind every weekend if I do show up. So I hope it's a, a reoccurring circumstance, and I look forward to mixing it up with those guys throughout the rest of this year. And it, it was great. Uh, like obviously, everybody up there uh, usually belongs up there, and they're willing to take the risks that come with being up there. So as a driver, it was a lot of fun. It was a big learning opportunity. 
uh, definitely learned a lot just watching people and seeing the runs they could generate and what they could do and vice versa, what we've accomplished as a team at Big Machine Racing, that we could hang with those guys and uh, be right there with them all the way through the race. Okay, so let's get to the end. Of course, the other big part of your day. Um, obviously, you know, Daytona can come with the, the amount of survival and you don't, don't know what's gonna happen on that last lap. But of course, the, obviously the last lap crash where Myatt went up in the air. Um, you apparently, apparently, uh, of course, you were the car that went over him. Yeah. What was that he, like? Yeah, he went over me. I definitely had a front row seat for that one. Uh, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen from the driver's seat. Uh, I've never, that was definitely the first time I've ever had a car literally fly over the top of me and drive underneath him. And uh, it was just kind of unreal. I was definitely lost in the moment for a few seconds. I, there's a of my uh, driver radio out there on the internet and everybody that's listened to it it's pretty interesting yeah yeah i i think i had the scanner of the 21 on um, yeah. during that whole last lap thing so uh yeah but really it, it just goes to show you that you know obviously things i mean that's the first time i've saw seen the engine pop out of that thing since god i don't know when probably when austin dillon or had his thing back in 15 and awkwardly enough at Daytona or maybe the Elliott Sadler crash in 2010. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that almost, I mean, that's, I mean, what is that? What's that like to, to, to go through that again, like watching it and coming out of that. Of course, I know you talked about it in the care center. That was the first time you've ever had a car go over you. Yeah. Um, what was that all uh, going, looking back on it after a few days, do you still think, Oh, I had a car go over me. Yeah, it was definitely pretty surreal. I could even I could not even imagine what it had to been like for my uh, that had to be pretty decently scary inside that car. Yeah. I mean, an Xfinity car just got disassembled in three seconds right. in that crash. Um, so I could only imagine what he went through, knowing that what I saw was pretty spectacular. I mean, it was it was pretty hard to believe. Yeah. So it's just, everyone talks about, you know, how safe these cars are. Mm -hmm. You're actually in one of them. Um, and you've taken some pretty hard hits in this car. And, and of course, throughout last year and stuff, how safe are these things? Well, any type of racing, anything, there's always circumstances that can be unforeseen and things can still happen. But NASCAR has done their homework and uh, in my mind they have built the, the safest cars on the planet that allow us to go racing as hard as we do and when accidents like that do happen um, more times than not the, the driver walks away with little to no injury which this is amazing like you you watch that crash and you it's hard to believe that somebody walked away from that and, and you see crashes through all throughout the year that same circumstance like wow it's like you can't relate it to what people experience out in the regular normal roadways. Right. Uh, and that shows that NASCAR has done their work to, to allow us to go out there and race and give us the opportunity if something bad happens to go race next weekend. Right. Of course, uh, you're going to go to another going from Daytona. You're going to head to uh, a track that you've never been to mm -hmm. um, Auto Club Speedway. Yeah, we're getting to the most of the tracks at later on you have been to, but this is, this is similar. It's a two mile track, similar to what, you know, Michigan is, but what's that going to be like to go to a two mile track at Auto Club Speedway? Well, it's one I'm looking forward to. We've done a lot of sim work there and we're happy with everything that we put together. Uh, but I do think it'll be one of those uh, kind of wait and see moments, see how much my homework has carried over and allows me to get up to speed quickly to a place I've never been to. And it's, like you mentioned, it is similar to Michigan where we did have a really strong run there last year, but I know there are some uh, big differences between Michigan and Fonta Fontana with the uh, track surface and the, the amount of bumps around the track. So it'll be interesting from a car setup standpoint and a driver standpoint to see how close we can get to being really competitive there. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, Jade Buford, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us and good luck this weekend at Auto Club. Thank you.